Okay, ladies and gentlemen, in this video we are looking at examples specifically. Uh, there, All three of the examples in this video are going to cover a law of detachment, Okay, but the directions are not going to state that. The directions on your homework assignment and in your book in general, and in, in general, are going to say, determine if the conclusion is valid or invalid and explain your reasoning. So what we're going to do here is we're going to check for whichever law the pattern calls for. Okay, And the way we tell the difference is that the law of detachment requires one given, one if-then statement in our givens and one non-if-then statement in our givens, whereas the law of syllogism requires two if-then statements in the given. So what we do is we ask ourselves, are both of our givens if-then statements? If the answer is yes, we check the law of syllogism. If the answer is no, we check the law of detachment. And then if it does not match the pattern, it's an invalid argument and we'd have to explain how it didn't match that pattern. So, here we have two given statements. Our first given statement is an if-then statement. If two angles form a linear pair, then their non-common sides are opposite rays. And our second given statement is not an if-then statement. It is just a statement. So that means we need to be checking the law of detachment. Again, the law of detachments pattern says that if P, then Q is your first statement. Your second statement must say P is true, which would then allow you to draw a valid conclusion that Q is also true. So that's what we're looking for. Okay, That's the pattern we are going to check. We need to have that exact pattern. If P, then Q. P is true, which allows us to draw the conclusion that Q is also true. So, the if-then statement reads, if two angles form a linear pair, then their non-common sides are opposite rays. So, P is going to be two angles form a linear pair, and Q is going to be their non-common sides or opposite rays which means that our second statement has to state that two angles form a linear pair, which it does. It specifically names angles AED and AEB. That's two angles form a linear pair. Now, we should know our vocabulary enough to know that that means that those two angles are sharing vertex E and side EA. Those are the common sides common vertex and the common side. The non-common sides then would be the two rays that form these other angles. You've got ang ray ED and you've got ray EB. Okay, see how those fit? Uh, Q, hopefully. Okay, we've got two rays there. We have ray ED and ray EB. Those are the opposite rays. So if you notice here in the second line in the conclusion, in our third statement, as it were, in our conclusion, they state that ED, which is this ray here, and EB, that ray there, are opposite rays. Those are the non-common sides. So that does refer back to Q and does allow us to state that this is a valid argument using the law of detachment. And that is how we explain our reasoning if it's a valid argument as we list which law makes it a valid argument. Okay? So let's do another example. Oh man, that's way more than I wanted. I just want this. Can I just have this? No? Okay, let's write it out again. All right. So here's another example. Uh, once again, we need to determine which law we are going to be using. So we should notice that our givens the first given is an if-then statement, and our second given is not an if-then statement, which once again means that we are going to be following the pattern for law of detachment. Once again, that should say if P, then Q. P is true, therefore... Q is also true. Okay? That's the pattern we're going to be looking for. 
Okay, it has to match that pattern exactly. So it has to say if P, then Q. P is also is true, therefore Q is also true. If it does not match that pattern, then it is not a valid argument. Okay, so let's have a look here. We have if Micah goes to the beach, so that's your P value, then she will wear sunscreen. So if P, then Q. Our second statement, then, should refer back to the hypothesis P. It should say, Micah is going to the beach. It doesn't. It refers to Q and says that she is wearing sunscreen. This does not match the pattern. So it doesn't matter that the conclusion, the third statement, does refer back to the hypothesis because that just, it doesn't in the right order. It can't be a valid argument if it's not in the right order, okay? Doesn't match the pattern. This is an invalid argument. The second given does not follow the pattern. for a law of detachment, it is in the wrong order. So this is an invalid argument, and we've explained how it's an invalid argument, so we have explained our reasoning. One more example, and we'll end this video. So here's a third example. Uh, once again, we should notice that our first statement is an if-then statement. Our second statement is not an if-then statement, which means that, once again, we are going to check the law of detachment. So, once again, we take our if-then statement. If a student turns in a permission slip, so that's your P, a student turns in a permission slip, then the student can go on the field trip. So your Q is the student can go on the field trip. Your second given then refers to a specific student. It says that Felipe turned in his permission slip, which does refer back to P. So there is a valid conclusion. Our valid conclusion would have to be Felipe can go on the field trip, which is exactly what they've drawn as their third conclusion. That makes this a valid argument under the law of detachment. Okay, that does it for our, fir our first example video. We'll have two more example videos. The next one is going to focus on examples specific to law of syllogism. Thank you for your time.